this is an extract from, how's that for telling them that lady? Roddy McDowell lives miles away. Everybody in Los Angeles lives miles away. Not from anywhere, because there isn't actually an anywhere to live miles away from, <laughs> but from each other. It was therefore a long drive through increasingly lush suburbia, like Surrey on the rampage, both in foliage and architecture. Through gates, down a short, wide drive, and to a flunky or two waiting to park cars. And then into the house to be served a, thank God, enormous drink by another flunky, with Roddy McDowell and a group of prosperous looking guests gathered around a fire. Recognisably present were Coral Brown, Vincent Price, and above all, the actress Lee Remick, one of my all-time favourite ladies. Of the screen, that is. I'd never actually met her in the flesh before. She's got these adorable teeth. The thing about them is that they just slightly protrude over her underlip when she smiles. And the effect, on me anyway, is simply annihilating. <laughs> now, I just go straight to pieces. Whenever I see that smile on the screen, I go to pieces. And there she was in the flesh, looking pretty good, and smiling that smile on the other side of the room. I hustled myself shyly over to her and said what a great fan of hers I was, especially in that film... <laughs> I couldn't remember a single film she did. <laughs> Not a single film. I stared at her blankly and then managed to dredge one up. You know, I said. Oh, you know. With Gregory Peck. <laughs> and Robert Mitchum violated you. <laughs> she said that she'd never been in a film in which Robert Mitchum violated you. <laughs> She wished she had. <laughs> and smiled her smile. Well, I blundered on to the effect that the film was made so long ago I couldn't remember it properly, thus indicating that not only could I not remember her through the years, but that there have been so many, many years, how could I hope to? Also giving the impression, I think, that I'd been in short trousers while she'd been playing grown-up part. The pity as I really would like to have expressed my, my... Well, anyway, she was rescued by Roddy McDowell, a perfect host in every respect. Dinner itself was fine. I made amends with Lee Remick, who sat next to me, not by suddenly remembering her films, but by recalling that I'd read somewhere that she'd lived for a long time in London, which gave us a subject to talk about. And then I had a gossip with Coral Brown that I would have enjoyed even more if I hadn't been conscious of myself, chain-smoking away in frayed togs, down at heel shoes, rather like the voodoo tramp in the Renoir film, only without his insouciance. <laughs> at least I didn't belch. 